Hi guys, Black Wolf here, and I'm reading The False Prince, Chapter 17. Sorry, I have to find, the, find it quickly. Okay. I was already in bed when Tobias and Rowan came in. If they realized that I might have been asleep, they spoke to me anyway. We heard about the trick you pulled with Mott's knife, Rowan said. Connor wanted to give you a few lashes, but Mott said he handled it with you already. Who's my dressing servant now, Tobias asked. Dress yourself, I muttered. You've managed for your entire life until now. Connor has made us into a gentleman, he said. A gentleman would never stoop to dress himself. If you put us in dresses, we wouldn't suddenly become women, I said. You're an orphan in a costume, Tobias, nothing more. Roden's servant was in the room, gathering Roden's neck clothes. Tobias looked at him and said, Fill the, the fire. Roden and I both groaned. It's already warm enough, Roden said. Do you want to cook us in our beds tonight? Tobias began grabbing the paste gathering the papers on his desk near his bed. I want to burn these. Why? I asked, propping myself up on my elbows. What's on them? Nothing made in setting to be the prince. I don't want you or Roden to read them and gain from my efforts. Neither of us can read, Roden said. It's chicken scratch on those papers as far as I'm concerned. Sage can read a little, Tobias said. I yawned. True, but you're an imbecile. If I wanted to learn about something important, you're the last person I'd come for, to for information. Tobias slammed the book closed. I hope you continue in your ways. It makes Connor's decision that much simpler. Connor's decision is made, I said. Oh, Tobias asked. Who is it? You. Now I set up entirely. You're the most willing to do anything he wants, the most pliable. He knows I'd be difficult to manage, and he does. He can't be sure about Roden. But you, you're the perfect... You're a puppet master's dream. Tobias's mouth opened wide, then closed. Finally, he said, Connor may think what he likes. I'm also the smartest of the three of us, and if I become the prince, then I will rule no one else. If Connor puts you in, then he can take you out. Roden said, How do you know it won't be the way Sage says? Tobias shook his head. Don't you two worry about me. Worry about your own necks instead. Lessons the next day were the same were much the same as the day before. Master Graves rubbed his knuckles several times before staring off into space when he thought I should stare at his chalkboard instead. Mr. Savalo educated us on the names of everyone connected with King Eckbert's family. Very few members of King Eckbert's family remain alive, and most of them are distant rel relations. So there is little chance of meeting anyone who knew the prince well enough to identify him, he said. But everyone will expect you to know these names. Tobias took steady notes. I ate most of his lunch, and he never noticed. Mr. Savalo spent... Havala spent the remainder of our time after lunch describing Prince Jaren's older brother, Darius. He was everything a future king ought to be, she said. Educated, compassionate, wise. That was Carthia. That was Car That's what Carthia will expect from whichever of us is chosen, so I said. We have to do better than just imitate Jaren. We have to exceed the people's expectations for Darius. Leave it to you, and by the end of the week, the chosen prince will have to raise the dead, too, I scoffed. None of us is going to exceed Darius. You won't, Roden said. I had no comeback for him. My whole life was a testament of truth of that fact. There's an old saying in Avinia that goes, just because it's calmer than a hailstorm doesn't mean it's calm. Several times during our horseback lessons later that day, that thought ran through my mind. The tension in the air was thick and, ta and tangible. Craig and I quickly settled into a truce of not speaking. Or rather, I wasn't speaking to him. He had plenty to say to me. Connor blamed me for you losing Windstorm, he said. You get to... You get to say whatever you want to me, challenge my authority, and I take the blame? You sh you think you're a fine gentleman now, so you can look down on me? Well, you're still the pathetic orphan sage. You smell like a pig when you came in here, and no matter what sense they add to your mouthwater, you always will. I gritted my teeth and reminded myself that in all fairness, I probably had smelled pretty bad before. I'll have to pay for that horse, the master says. Craigan continued. Paying it off will take so many years of service, I can't count them. But I won't be in the service much longer. I have plans on my own. He wanted me to ask what his plans were so he could have the satisfaction, satisfaction of telling me that it was none of my business. I didn't care an inch about his plans, so I stared at him steadily, which infuriated him further. From now on, any horse you ride will be tethered to mine, and you will get the calmest, least excitable horse in the stables. You won't be able to get it to do anything I don't want it to do. Wait, Tobias said. If he gets the easiest horse, then it will appear to Connor that he's the best rider. I smiled at Tobias. His eyes narrowed. That was your plan all along, Roden whispered. I don't have Tobias's brains or your strength, they said to them. Give me this one area to compete with you two. Craig stared at us for a moment, clearly just trying to decide whether to give me the easiest horse or not. He didn't want to help me, nor did he want to risk getting himself in trouble again with a horse out of my league. 
I'm not even best with horses, he said. I'm a swordsman, but not but Ma ordered me here so he could teach swords. Teach us bolts, Rodin said. I'll learn. Tobias rolled his eyes. So far you've taught us neither horses nor swords. Our lesson time is passing faster. The devils are punishing me for everything I've ever done wrong in my life, he said, marching to the stables to get the horses. They sent me you three. In the end, we all had easy horses, and our ride on Connor's grounds was so boring I thought I'd go insane. I wasn't the only one. You have to teach us more than riding like schoolgirls on a Sabbath afternoon, Tobias said. The prince will be expected to show off his masterful riding skills. Thanks, Sage, for this lesson, Craigan said. I can't risk any of you getting hurt like yesterday. On either side of me, Ronan and Tobias shot out glares again. I think you planned this, Ronan said to me. I think you deliberately spoiled it for all of us so that now Tobias and I wouldn't have a chance to get any better. What? I chuckled softly. That idea had never occurred to me, although if it were true, it would have been... It would have been clever. After a wasted hour on horseback, Mott collected us for a sword fighting lesson. Because Sage went missing yesterday, we will have to make up that lesson now, he said, leading us toward the small courtyard where he and I had practiced two nights earlier. He gestured to the wall where the various swords were hung. By the end of these two weeks, we'll have you dueling with these swords, but for now you get wooden ones. I folded my arm. Where's the prince's sword? Mott turned to look at me. Sure enough, Jaren's sword was missing. The prince's sword was here, Tobias said. Asked. Just a copy of it, I said, and Mott glared at me as if personally insulted by my words. But he shouldn't have. I have been perfectly accurate. How did you know about this sword? Rodin asked me. Mott and I practiced here the other night. Rodin and Tobias reacted with open mouths and narrow eyes, exactly as they knew they would. But they didn't have time, much time to protest. Connor will want to know of this, Mott said, ignoring their whines. Follow me. We found Connor in his office, poring over a thick and dusty book. Mott spoke to him privately for a moment, then had all had us all come in to the room and stand in front of Connor's desk. Connor's office was lined with shelves of books and the occasional buster trinket. Near the back of the room, he had a massive desk that faced the door and two comfortable chairs that faced the desk. It made me wonder if he had a business th through which he earned his own money, or whether his was the kind of wealth passed from father to son through the generations. I suspected the latter was true. Connor sat with his hands folded together. This was no ordinary sword, boys. It was nearly an exact of club, Prince Jaren's sword, before he was lost. It was last seen around his base at supper the night before he boarded the ship that ultimately carried him to his doom. Now you may think by stealing it you've given yourself an advantage. Perhaps you believe you can use the sword to shore up your, your claims of being the prince when you are presented at court. But this is futile because, as I said, it's not an exact of club. Anyone with a practice eye will easily know it's copy. Perhaps you have stolen it to give yourself an advantage in sword fighting. Again, this is futile. Any of you may practice with Ma as often as you like to become as skilled as you'd like. And if you stole it so that the other two boys couldn't practice with it, then remember that there are several other swords still w available for practice. Now, I want confession. Who took it? All three of us remained silent. Connor couldn't possibly believe that the thief would confess. None of us was that stupid. Sage must have taken it, Tobias said. Why is that, Connor asked. He's the only one who's already handled the sword, which is evidence of nothing, Connor said. It was it was there while the boys were on horseback lessons yesterday, Mama said. We know where Sage was at the time and all of the boys had been and all of the boys had been supervised since then. Where were you and Roden during that time? Connor asked Tobias. Tobias hesitated. After Sage ran off on Windstorm, Cragen was going to follow him. He told us to go to the sword arena and wait for Mott. But after a few minutes, the servant came and told us that Ma had gone to look for Sage, too. So we left. We left together, Rodin said quickly. If either of us had taken it, the other one, one would know. And what did you do after returning to the house, Connor asked. Tobias' eyes fluttered. I was in the library. Rodin frowned. I went back to our room. And can either of you provide proof that you were there? After a very long and very uncomfortable silence, I rocked to my heels and smiled. For the first time, I'm glad that, I ri that the horse ran off with me. Okay, well, that was actually longer than I expected it to be. Uh, so please don't forget to look up the False Prince audiobook part. Uh, whatever chapter I'm on. 18, because it will be there. It will be there. And, uh, yeah. Goodbye.